All right, I want to talk about timeshare presentations while you're on vacation, what they are, what they look like, um, and how that might go for you. So um, I will start this that I have done two timeshare presentations. I have done one at an all-inclusive resort in Mexico, and I have done one at Walt Disney World. And both of them went actually really well for me, um, but both of them really got close to us purchasing one, which would have not been okay for us. So let me kind of backtrack and tell you what you can expect, how you're approached, etc. I'm going to talk about all inclusives. I'll touch on Disney as well, though, at the end. So at an all-inclusive resort or any timeshare presentation, the end goal, of course, is for you to buy a timeshare. What is a timeshare? It is pretty much you paying a monthly fee. So like you're paying rent on something or a mini mortgage. And ultimately, it is allowing you to, at the end, own a piece of a vacation property. So usually that's a week or so per year at a resort complex. Um, the kicker is a lot of times they will try to say, or they will say, and it's true, that maybe um, it'll be used at multiple properties. You can have options. Um, there are always ways that you can kind of sell off your timeshare week if you don't want to use it. So it kind of sounds really enticing that you will maybe pay $100, $200 a month um, every month and then every year you get a week vacation. Um, the problem is that there are a lot of terms and conditions in here that ultimately a lot of people find very discouraging, very uncomfortable, and quite frankly want to get out of. Um, also, if your financials change significantly, high COVID, um, then maybe that would have been something that is ultimately not good because even though you've paid and paid and paid for years, if you don't finish out your time paying on this vacation um, ownership, which might be 10, 15, 20 years, then you ultimately don't ever like own anything. The idea is that if you own a piece of timeshare, you can gift it when you die. Um, but a lot of people don't make it that far. So realistically, you're kind of stuck in this trap paying for something. And then there are hefty fees to get out of the contract. So at an all-inclusive, it is very possible that you will be approached by somebody selling a timeshare to go on a, um, a, a inquiry meeting. So they'll approach you, they're gonna be very nice, it's gonna be a salesperson. Let me make sure this is key that these people are very good at sales strategies. Hands down, if you needed a car and you wanted a brand new one, they're gonna sell you one with the wheel falling off and they're gonna tell you it's a great deal. Um, they're very, very good. So the ploy to get you in there is that they're going to incentivize you for your time. So they're going to tell you it's only going to take a half hour to do the presentation. That's all the time that you need, maybe an hour. And when you do that, you're going to get a credit. So this might be a credit of a um, tour credit. So maybe they'll give you two, $300 as a tour credit. Maybe they'll give you a resort credit. Maybe they will give you a free night stay to use at a later time. They're going to give you something that seems big enough and worth enough your time to leave your pool with your drink in your hand and go into a meeting room. So on that presentation, they will maybe take you to breakfast or, you know, at your all-inclusive, um, but they'll have breakfast with you. Maybe they will probably take you on some sort of resort tour so you can see different room categories that you haven't seen before. Um, and then they will ultimately take you into a meeting room. In that meeting room, you will probably watch some sort of video that's going to show very happy clients. It's going to show the price breakdown of you just paid this much and you get something so big. Um, and then ultimately going to sit down one on one at a table, probably with some salesperson. And they're going to go through, they're going to have their pen and paper out and they're going to kind of draw it out for you. So it seems like such a great investment. For some people, this really is a good investment. So I don't want to say that timeshares in all are bad. But when you are somebody that likes to vacation, you like to change up your vacations and you may not take one every year and your financials could change, they're just not the best thing to get stuck into. Number one, you might find better deals if you bundle it with flights later on down the road. One of the ways that my clients are so happy is because I save them money by bundling flight and hotel. You can't do that when you have a time. Sure, you just have to get your own flight. There are maintenance fees that you don't think of, and they're not exactly forthcoming usually about. Um, there are a lot of fine print details about the weeks that you can and can't have your timeshare. Um, there are also a lot of contingencies about when you die, passing it along or letting other people use it, etc. cetera. Um, in the end, so many times people realize after they've done this timeshare that they need to get out of it. And at that point, a lot of times it takes an attorney to help you do so. So the reason that you might want to do this timeshare presentation is because the perks sounds so good. Getting a resort or a tour credit of $300 and you want to go do this tour that costs $300, it's free. That's fine. And if you're willing and able to sit through that timeshare presentation, I did. I did it for that exact same reason. 
then that's fine. Just know that their sales strategies are going to be good enough that you are going to ultimately really, really think about this timeshare, even though you went in having zero intention of ever even contemplating it. So I just need you to know, or one of you in your group to know that you have to a thousand percent be ready to say no if you do accept that. Um, also be ready for a very uncomfortable situation because obviously they can't grab you and hold you in that chair to make you look at it. But as humans, we are kind of um, uncomfortable comfortable or onto awkward situations and we'd rather please somebody than hurt their feelings or make them feel uncomfortable. Um, so just know that you're definitely going to be put in that situation and you just kind of have to keep your mind on the prize at the end. Say no, no, no. Um, and then eventually you will get out. So keep that in mind. That's what that would look like there. You will get your credit. They're not lying to you. They'll give it to you. Um, but they will bring over a manager to talk to you. They will bring over another salesperson to talk to you. And ultimately, they're going to keep trying and keep trying to get you to do it. Um, if you go to Disney World and you choose to do a timeshare presentation, which is called DVC, um, Disney Vacation Club, um, you can go on that timeshare presentation. Typically, um, it's very similar. They will take you to see a couple different properties or mocks of what the rooms will look like. Um, they will take you and show you a video. They will go over the financials, et cetera, um, and show you the different locations that you can use your timeshare at. Um, that one, typically the, um, during non-COVID times, the uh, incentive has been fast passes. You get additional fast passes to do it. Um, right now, I wouldn't be sure of that, but in the future, I would bet that that's the um, incentive again. Once again, if it's worth your time or if you're thinking about it, do it. Um, the couple things that I just ask that you keep in mind in general are that, um, are you willing to be put in that situation? Are you willing to take some of your day in order to do that? Um, and ultimately, is the end goal worth your time while you're there? If you are very much so against doing a timeshare presentation, then the big trick of thumb that I always tell clients is, tell them you're a travel agent because they won't come to you because they know that a travel agent, of course, is never going to purchase a timeshare and that'll be a waste of their time. So if you get approached, especially more than once at some of the resorts in Mexico, Dominica, and Jamaica, um, some of them can be a little bit pushy. So you just have to be forceful and say, no, I'm not interested. Um, and then you can always say, you know, my spouse is a travel agent or my mom is a travel agent and they will leave you alone. So hope that answers some of your questions about timeshares. Um, if you have any questions about them, don't hesitate to ask. And I hope you have a great time on your vacation when you go and are approached by a timeshare presentation. Take care.